Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a gothic horror film, The Devil's Backbone. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with a narrator asking us what a ghost is, and then we're taken to the final year of the Spanish Civil War. We see a plane dropping a bomb, and it lands next to an orphanage, after which the scene ships to an orphan boy named Santi, who is lying on the floor, seemingly dead with a puddle of blood under his head. His bully friend, named Bully, shows up and cries upon seeing what has happened to Santi. Eventually, Santi is thrown into the pool next to him, and Bully cries out of sadness. In the middle of this drama, the narrator continues to explain the relevance of spirits and how they affect us. Some visuals show us a demonic spine, and then we move to a boy named Carlos, who is being taken to a remote town by his tutor and an assistant. This turns out to be the same place where the bomb was dropped earlier, and Carlos goes to check out the bomb, which still hasn't exploded. Watching from a distance is an old man named Beardy, along with his friend's wife, the headmistress of the orphanage, who has a wooden leg. As Carlos continues to check out the bomb, a lady takes the tutor and his assistant inside the orphanage, where Beardy and headmistress await them. Carlos spots a mysterious boy spying on him, so he follows him into a room. However, he gets distracted by Bully and his gang of boys, who want some candy. The mysterious boy is then revealed to be a spirit, presumably Santi. Now we learn that Headmistress and Beardy are Republican loyalists who are hiding gold inside the orphanage. This gold is being used to fund the Republicans during the Spanish War, and even the tutor is on their side. However, it's too dangerous to keep Carlos with him, so the tutor decides to leave him in the care of Beardy and Headmistress. Meanwhile, Carlos is given a hard time by Bully, who doesn't like the fact that he has a tutor. Suddenly, the tutor leaves Carlos' briefcase on the ground and abandons him. Carlos runs after the tutor in an emotional sequence, but cannot catch up to the Ferrari carriage. Alone and betrayed, Carlos now has to deal with Headmistress and Beardy, who are going to raise him as another one of the orphan boys. Beardy gets friendly with Carlos and talks to him about music, while Headmistress also tries to be accommodating. She takes Carlos to the common room, where all the boys sleep at night. Headmistress then advises Carlos against running away from the orphanage, because he will have nowhere to go from there. Carlos has to deal with his new life, so he gets into his new bed. However, Bully and his friends enter the common room and see this. Bully gets particularly affected, because the bed given to Carlos used to belong to Santi. At night, we meet a hunky man named Hunk, who is the caretaker of the orphanage. He is seen talking with some accomplices about his plans to get out of this place, because the war is getting worse. He also has a sexy fiancé named Babe, who is a teacher at the orphanage. Babe doesn't like Hunk's accomplices, but he reassures her that this is just a temporary partnership so that he can get out of the orphanage. It is then revealed that Hunk is also an orphan who has been living there for the past 15 years. Headmistress is secretly listening in on Hunk and Babe, and there seems to be something fishy going on. Later, Carlos sees Santi's name inscribed on his bed and suddenly hears ghostly noises. He notices a shadow in front of him, so he pulls his sheet but finds nobody there. Suddenly, a couple of jugs fall to the floor and shatter to pieces, after which a ghostly figure is seen running across the hall. Bully and the others wake up and tell Carlos that he has to fill up more jugs from the kitchen area. However, Carlos calls Bully a chicken shit and convinces him to come along to fill the jugs. On their way, they have a look at the giant bomb but shift their attention to Hunk's house, where he is engaging in hormone yoga with Babe. Bully doesn't want Carlos to treat his eyes because he has a crush on Babe. The boys then head to the kitchen so that they can fill up the jugs. Carlos gets to work and fills up his jug, but a ghost boy drops some scissors behind him. Hunk hears this noise and loads up his gun to inspect the kitchen, leaving Babe high and dry. Carlos quickly hides when Hunk enters the kitchen and Bully is able to make it outside. Hunk smokes a cigarette and tries to open a safe, which is presumed to have gold in it. He is unable to succeed, so he exits the kitchen and locks the door, leaving Carlos trapped inside. He goes back home, probably to resume his hormone session with Babe. Meanwhile, Carlos explores the kitchen area and finds a flight of stairs leading to an underground basement. He follows the path and is led to a dungeon of sorts. There, Carlos notices the same pool of water where Santi was sent to die. He then spots the ghost boy hiding behind a pillar and tries to talk to him, but gets jump scared instead. Now he hears the ghost boy's voice, which gets creepier by the second. Carlos is told that many people will die soon, so he acts fast and manages to escape the building through a gap in the windows. Carlos successfully avoids the ghost boy and even retrieves the jug of water, but he gets betrayed by Bully and the other boys, who fire their slingshots at the jug and break it. This alerts Hunk, who catches Carlos immediately and berates him. 
The next day, Carlos is forced to reveal who was with him the previous night, but he doesn't crack under pressure. Beardy quietly observes Bully's gang as they look at Carlos suspiciously. This gives him proof that they are the true culprits, and then all the boys are given punishment. They work on a crucifix, while also leering at Babe and Hunk getting romantic, but smelly. Meanwhile, Beardy and Headmistress have a chat about the kids seeing ghosts. They get a little romantic using their muscles. Then we shift to Carlos, who is by the pool again. He wants to talk to the ghost boy, but Bully and his gang show up and bully him. Things are about to get tricky, but Carlos acts fast and smacks Bully with a rock. Bully falls into the pool, so Carlos saves him, although he doesn't notice Santi's body inside. After the rescue, Hunk shows up and scolds the boys for making trouble. He proceeds to slash Carlos in the face and orders him not to say a word of this to anyone because it will make him look bad. Later, Carlos gets treated by Beardy, who goes on to show him some jars filled with baby corpses. He explains that these babies have external spines, known as the devil's backbone. Beardy also shows a type of rum, which is made with these dead babies, and says that the rum is used to treat all kinds of illnesses, even hormone deficiencies. Beardy offers the rum to Carlos, but he refuses to drink it and runs away from the chamber. Regardless, Beardy has a shot of the rum for refreshment to treat his dying body. During the night, Bully and his gang wake Carlos up in bed. He panics at first, but they reassure him that they're not here to fight. The boys enjoy some idle talk, after which we see Headmistress in the middle of a smelly workout with Hunk. She's so ashamed of her desires that she cannot even kiss Hunk, so he mocks her for being a hypocrite. Hunk explains that Beardy is too old to satisfy Headmistress. We also learn that this hormone affair began when Hunk was only 17 years old. Now Hunk ties the wooden leg to Headmistress to make her feel whole. They begin the nasty game round too, while Beardy hears the hormone noises from the other side of the wall and laments his old sausage. Meanwhile, the boys continue to talk about the ghost stories of the orphanage. Carlos finally learns about Santi, who had gone missing when the bomb had dropped next to the orphanage. The boys believe that Santi's blood was drained to be given to rich people with tuberculosis. However, Carlos realizes that Santi is the ghost boy that he had encountered earlier. The next day, Hunk loads up some stock into the Ferrari carriage for delivery, but Beardy acts rude in front of him because he knows about the affair now. Bully gives Babe a cheap gift and she likes it, but Hunk tells him to get lost and then he sets off with Babe and Beardy. It's time for class, but nobody wants to listen to headmistress lessons, so Carlos and Bully talk about his drawings. Later at night, Carlos sneaks into Bully's drawer and takes his drawing book. There, he finds sketches of Santi dead on the floor and figures that there's something that Bully hasn't told him. Meanwhile, Beardy notices some of the Republican loyalists being rounded up for a public execution. He notices the tutor among the prisoners of war and fears that he might have exposed the location of the orphanage and the gold to the enemy. Now, Carlos tries to summon Santi and eventually finds him in his ghost form. Santi keeps talking about people dying and finally shows his ghost face, so Carlos runs away feeling scared. Santi follows after him, but Carlos manages to lock himself inside a storage room. He briefly peeks through the peephole and is jump scared by Santi. Carlos decides to hide inside the room for the entire night and scares a maid when she opens the door to find him there. Now, Beardy returns with Hunk and Babe and he tells Headmistress that they need to leave, otherwise they will even be caught and killed like the tutor. However, Hunk doesn't like the sound of this and confronts Headmistress later, demanding her to give him the hidden gold. But she mocks Hunk and his greed by calling him a prince without a kingdom. Hunk is about to get violent, but then Beardy shows up with his shotgun. Hunk tries to act smart and exposes Headmistress's hormone affair with him in front of everyone. However, he gets smacked by her cane and is told to get his hunky body lost. After a dramatic exit, the orphan boys quickly pack up and get ready to leave town. But Bully wants to know what Carlos saw the previous night. He says it was Santi, and then he walks away nonchalantly. Later, Babe spots gasoline on the ground and follows the trail to find Hunk with a can of fuel. It turns out that he's trying to burn the orphanage to the ground, so Babe tries to stop him with a shotgun. It causes them to exchange some punches, rather than hormones, and Babe manages to shoot in Hunk, injuring his arm, but he still manages to throw his cigarette into the gasoline. Chaos follows as the whole place is set on fire. Beardy and Hitmistress try their best to keep everyone safe, but it's of no use as an explosion is set off and everything is blown to pieces. After some time, Beardy wakes up and finds Babe dealing with some of the survivors. He rushes inside and finds dead children everywhere. He also finds Hitmistress, who is breathing her last breath. Beardy tries to treat her, and then Babe decides to walk to the neighboring town for help. However, Hitmistress dies while Beardy recites one last poem to her. 
This makes him upset, and he takes guard with a shotgun, while cursing Hunt for being a jerk. At night, Carlos and Bully bond with each other, and Bully finally decides to take us to an expositional flashback. We see Bully and Santi, who are chilling with each other in the dungeon. However, they spot Hump trying to steal gold from the safe. Bully manages to hide himself, but Hump notices Santi, so he attacks him for seeing his crimes. Unfortunately, it leads to a struggle, and Hump ends up killing Santi by smacking him against a pillar. Hump panics at first, but gets some stones and ties them to Santi's body, after which he sinks him to the bottom of the pool. Bully witnesses all of this and steps out of the dungeon, only to see the bomb dropping right in front of him. Back to the present, Bait runs into Hunk and his accomplices. Hump forces her to apologize for what happened earlier with Beardy, but she mocks him, so he stabs and kills her. His accomplices spot Beardy, who is still alive, so Hump goes to the orphanage. Later, Bully sees Beardy's dead body and is suddenly confronted by someone, later revealed to be Hunk, who had also killed Beardy. Meanwhile, Carlos runs into Santi, who tells him to bring Hunk to him. Carlos goes to Beardy, but sees his corpse and gets confronted by Hunk, who now has Bully as his hostage. Now, Hunk makes all the orphan boys work as his slaves, so that he can recover the gold safe from under the rubble. Upon discovering the safe, Hunk taunts Bully by giving him the gift that he'd given to Bay earlier. The boys get locked inside a room, but Bully awakens his inner bully instincts and conspires with the others to rebel against Hunk. They sharpen some wooden sticks, and then one of the boys manages to crawl out of the room, but he gets injured after his landing. Meanwhile, Hunk and his accomplices open the gold safe, but can only find photographs in it. Bully and his gang get out of the room, but the injured boy states that it was Beery who opened the door and treated his injury, even though he's dead. At night, Hunk tells his accomplices to leave the boys to die, because they're all orphans anyway. The next day, Hunk manages to find the gold in Headmistress's wooden leg. He rejoices upon his discovery, but his accomplices leave him and drive away, because they think he's crazy. Then, Hump finds Bully and his gang, so he chases after them. Luckily, the boys unite and lethally injure Hunk with the sharp wooden sticks before pushing him into the pool. Carlos summons Santi, who delivers the finishing blow by killing Hunk inside the pool. Now the boys pack up and set off on their new journey after Carlos bids Beardy an emotional farewell. The movie ends with the narrator talking about ghosts once more, and then we see Beardy as a ghost, which explains how he was able to help the boys earlier. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.